Good evening, everyone. It's March the 25th, 2024. Uh, I have some more updates here um, that I feel it sh should be uh, passed on to my viewers. Um, we've been talking a lot about theft and theft amongst um, the uh, homeless and that. And um, the theft is getting out of control. And we've already have talked to you s some about the car thefts. And um, I wanted to add a little bit more about the car thefts today. And um, what happened last week was the um, apparently the police uh, made uh, 34 arrests in, in the vehicle thefts. And um, they called it Project Volcano. It was a collaboration between the OPP and the Montreal Police as the arrests were made in and, uh, in and near Montreal as the suspects lived in the Montreal area. The uh, car thefts were taking place in Ontario and um, the, the cars were driven to Montreal, uh, Quebec, as they were uh, intended to, to go to the Montreal port to be transported overseas. Some vehicles were stolen from the dealership, which we all have seen um, camera footage of um, some of these thefts, as well as um, being stolen from people's driveways and such. And at least one man was a repeat offender. Some were under the age of 18 years old, the youngest being uh, 16 years old. Again, we've now got more young offenders also very much involved with this as well. There is more uh, violence now being associated with car theft, for example, breaking into homes. People ha have been assaulted in their homes as well as, uh, as cars uh, for the keys and that, and uh, they've been pulled out of their cars, and it's um, a real major problem, and um, this is some of the problems that we're seeing a little bit with the homeless as well, and I've touched on some of the violence. Well, uh, I'm going to touch on an incident um, that happened uh, with me over the weekend here, and it wasn't um, very pleasant. Uh, uh, my dog woke me up, Heidi woke me up at, um, uh, in the middle of the night, and um, she something was going on at my apartment door, and I looked out the peephole. I saw that uh, this woman was just yelling and banging at my neighbor's door, apartment door, and uh, she was um, trying to tell, tell me one minute was let me in, the other was let me out, and I figured maybe she missed the exit, and you could tell she was higher than a kite. She was definitely very, very high while doing this, and she could barely stand up. Uh, then she'd come over to my door, start pounding on my door because we're next door to each other, and um, then, uh, of course, I had to put the dog away, keep her from barking, then um, she finally stopped after being very verbally aggressive at the time, banging on our doors. Um, so then after I put the dog away, I went and I had to call security. After I saw her, she slid down and became quiet. I didn't know if she had an overdose even, uh, but I wasn't quite sure exactly where she was located because my people can see some, but not completely everything. And I couldn't see the the floor exactly where she was but I could see her pack sack in the middle of the hallway and what I thought was a scarf lying a, a long scarf lying across the floor and I wasn't sure if she had slumped um, because uh, my neighbor and our doorways are so close together I wasn't sure if she had fallen in front of my neighbor's door or if she'd fallen in front of my door and if I opened my door she might fall into my apartment I wasn't sure what was going to happen at that point so, of course, I called security and uh, was told that security was on their way. There were several people that already called that there was a very um, aggressive person banging on, on the doors. So, um, they arrived and um, uh, they were, our security was very polite, told her to get up. And what I thought was the long scarf turned out it was her leg after she moved and that she had actually fallen in front of my neighbor's door. So, she got up from there then insisted on sitting on the floor and eating something to eat because she was hungry. Uh, then she started mouthing off, and I mean, uh, she was getting very aggressive, verbally aggressive at this point with our security. And it was not pleasant. Uh, she was going on trying to say, well, I live in the building here. Uh, that uh, You're going to be sorry. 
you did this and um and they and of course our off our securities is telling her to politely get up and leave but she refused and so it was like going on maybe about 15 20 minutes of her on the floor and some bickering back and forth and then then she turned around and she said yeah i live here and then, of course, and then she turns around and says, well, I'm signing the lease tomorrow, so I live here. So that didn't go over very well. And then it got even more uh, up on the level of her voice going up again. And she was talking about, well, I know this police officer, and you're going to be very sorry tomorrow morning, and you're going to have to apologize to me. So this was <laughs> the exchange back and forth on that. Then she couldn't find water out of her pack sack. Then she's calling... I didn't know she had someone in the stairwell with her because um, one of the guards had the stairwell door open as well, was watching both the, the stairwell as well as the hallway, but she couldn't seem to arouse her. Nobody came out or responded to her at that time. And uh, it just kept going back and forth with this exchange. And finally, she um, it was just really, really rude. Uh, it was F this, F that, and of course... And, uh, oh, yeah, t and just telling the guards off that she had a right to be there. And, no, she didn't have a right to be there. And I don't care if she had to sign her lease tomorrow. I wasn't signed now, so she still had no right to be here. So it ended up, as they took her, uh, she got finally got up. And as she went through the um, stairwell doors, I started hearing her voice even escalating further and further. And then um, uh, afterwards, uh, she was um, telling them to F off again and... Uh, let me up, let me up, uh, stop hurting me, stop hurting me. And um, I peeked out and saw that uh, they had her on the ground. So I guess she got it, um, and they were holding her down, or security. So I guess she got particularly aggressive. And then, of course, the police came by at that point and, uh, and took her down. And then at that point, I saw, oh, yes, she had a, another friend of hers, another male friend, was uh, slept through the whole thing. He was completely drugged up and out of it, so it took a couple of minutes for security to get him up on his feet, but he wasn't at least violent. But I wanted to just tell you that these are the incidences when they get into the buildings and, and looking for the drug dealers. And I'm not sure if this is the same woman that I sort of briefly mentioned that uh, she uh, a woman a few weeks ago was going along banging on doors, insisting that um, she lived uh, in my apartment door, and she told me I was in her apartment and that. So I'm not sure if it was the same woman because I couldn't see, but I know I, her face, and I would have recognized the face if it had been her. Um, but it was just really interesting because uh, this, where the dealer is, you always hear so much noise going on, banging on the doors, let me in, let me in, and this sort of thing. So they can get very, very aggressive. And I've seen this um, time and time again. Lately, we've had the fire alarms pulled a couple of times again. Uh, so the fire department has put out pamphlets for us now as well on, on fire uh, prevention and that as well. So it's very interesting just how this is going. And they're getting very annoyed at being called to false alarms. And um, now I'm getting, of course, you have the doorbell and your they ring it and your buzzer goes off and your phone goes off letting you know that somebody's at the front door. And this is now going on again overnight again with um, some woman trying to tell me, oh, I've lost my keys, please let me in, I'm freezing out here. Which, yes, we just went through a cold spell. But, of course, I just I, you don't let them in, because you don't know. This is one of their ploys as well as getting in. So my answer to that is, sorry, I don't know you, uh, but I don't let people in that I don't know, and then I hang up on them. So that's the best way to do it. And then a couple of hours after that ring, I got another ring where someone was early in the morning saying they were wanted into an apartment because they uh, uh, want, were trying to deliver something. So again, the same, same excuse. Don't know you, I'm not letting you in. It's as simple as that. And then the other thing that's uh, happening now I'm noticing is when I go up to one door and when I get into the building, uh, I'm seeing people either banging on the door and I say, well, I'm not going in, so I'm not gonna let them in. So I will go around to the other door and as I, uh, so they didn't th see anything, and then all of a sudden they saw me disappear around the corner. So they came running around the corner, and by that time I got safely back in the building. and was going up the stairwell, and by the time 
uh, they just saw the tail end of me going up the stairwell, and they're banging and screaming and kicking at the door and the windows and everything to be let in. They were trying to get my attention. So this is a, another ploy that we're having with the problem. And this is a total aggression that I'm seeing, uh, that we're getting. The door smashed in, or uh, today I uh, another one because of the fire extinguishers, for example, we had them put in those nice new boxes and um, hung on the wall. Well, it's uh, down on the floor this afternoon after I got up from my nap. It was up on where it was supposed to be on the wall this morning. But again, when they get mad, they just do whatever they want to do. They bang on doors. They do damage. But this woman that was banging on the door at that point, it was, uh, she had everybody awake in the apartment building because she was just screaming down the hallways. We were all hearing what was being said in the hallway, <laughs> literally, and the cameras were picking up everything as well. So it was, now that we have the cameras, it's, it's well covered what's going on. So we have more protection, but don't let people in. This is the first thing. If you get strange calls in the middle of the night, don't let people in. So I'm going to leave the video here today with a little bit of advice as well. So everyone, please be safe, be aware of your surroundings, take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. And bye-bye.